Hey everyone, my name is Mark Plant and this is MPV Vlogs. Hi everyone, like I said, my name is Mark Plant and this is MPV Vlogs. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button down on the bottom. You'll be able to check out all the videos that I've done. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Please hit that bell icon right next to the subscribe button. You'll get a notification anytime I put up a new video. If you're watching this on a mobile device, just make sure notifications are allowed. All right, so what we're basically going to do right now is we're going to continue the series of setting up a Plesk server, which is part of me cutting the cord. Uh, won't go through it again. Uh, I've done, I have a ton of videos. Uh, my family, we've cut the cord. So what I'm doing is I'm using Plex to set up a media server within my home. Uh, what this allows me to do is I am able to watch all of my DVDs by backing them up. I am able to look at any pictures I can set up on the media server. I am able to listen to music through my TV or my mobile device as long as I'm in my home. And with a, a special piece of equipment, I'm able to actually watch live television. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the computer and I'm gonna show you what you need to do in order to back up your DVDs so that you can view them through the Plex server. All right, everyone, so we are on my computer right now and I've already installed the Plex server. It's actually installed on a network area storage uh, device that I have connected to my network. Uh, with Plex, you can actually you can actually install it on your computer also. Uh, the reason why I am using a NAS is so that I can leave it on at all times. Uh, leaving my computer on 24 hours a day is number one going to cost a lot with electricity. It's also going to cause wear and tear on the computer. And if you've been following this channel, you know that I am using a very old iMac computer. So why don't we do this? What I'm going to do is let's take you over first to my Plex server to show you what I have. Start up Plex. And what you'll have to do is you'll set up a pin once it's all set up. So that you can go in okay and i've shown in past video that plex does offer a lot of free movies uh they offer i mean there's web shows that you can go in i don't think there's oh there are web shows here we go uh you can get news okay podcasts okay and you can eat well music is actually it's a subscription so, you do have access to all this music, but there is a monthly subscription fee. Plex TV also has their own TV stations. Uh, very similar to the stations that are carried on Plu the Pluto app. One of the things that I found also with the Plex on the NAS is it is a very minimal version of Plex. You don't have all the access that you do if you were to download the server onto a computer. But for what I want to do for my family and for my household, this works perfectly. So what you're seeing here, this screen here is basically my DVR. Uh, get a little ahead of myself here. Uh, let me go back, start on home here first. Okay, and like I said, we're back to the Plex information. Uh, with Plex, like I said, it's free if you want just this information here um, and just a basic media server to, uh, where you can back up your DVDs and be able to watch them throughout your home. Uh, one of the other options that you have with Plex is they have what's called the Plex Pass. Uh, one of the products that I bought came with a three-month trial subscription to it. So I'm trying it out right now to see how it works. And so far, it, it's pretty good. Uh, there are some things that aren't working the way that I want them to. And I'm having trouble finding documentation 
for the version of Plex that's on my NAS. So uh, it's, it's a work in progress. But when you do have the Plex Pass, you get a DVR. Okay. And for those of us that are cutting the cord, getting a DVR is a very difficult thing to do. One thing that I found that you need to be very careful with, if you're purchasing anything that's claiming to be a DVR, even like TiVo and products like that, is even though you purchase the product, you still are charged a monthly fee for this, even though you're saving it to your own computer. So just be aware of that. Um, this is one of the things that with Plex, if I didn't have the free service, I'd have to pay a monthly serve, a monthly charge to have this. So it's something I'm going to have to look at to see if it's actually worth it. They do offer a lifetime pass, but I'm not sure whether I want, I'm going to do that. In any case, let me show you what you get with the on your own Plex server. Like I said, this is the stuff that comes with Plex. But on my server, I have backed up movies that I had that I own as DVDs. These are available on any device within my home that's able to stream the media uh, with the Plex app. So my TV upstairs has the Roku Ultra with the, the app on it. Where I am right now in my office, I have the Chromecast with Google TV has the app on it. And I can actually even stream on my computer, as you can see here. Like, I could watch any of these movies. The other options that you have with it is you can put your own movies in here, which I have a couple here of my family. Um, there's another movies category that I created. Okay, so it's basically loading the the titles here, the title frames from the NAS, which is it's actually pretty good because all you do is, is you have to create a specific file, and when you upload it into the Plex server, it actually searches IMDb for what the cover of the DVD was. So I didn't have to add all of these in. Now, some of them it doesn't pick up for some reason, whether... The way that I named the file was incorrect or, or that sort of thing. So I'll have to go through and I'll have to clean these up. Like this here, I was one of the first DVDs that I ripped and I learned that I did it wrong. So I'm going to have to go in and delete these files out and redo it. And like I said, it brings you to a page that's very similar to what you would get on Netflix or Hulu. A um, lot of information. Gives you links to videos that could be up on YouTube and such. And what it'll also do is it'll look at the other movies that you have ripped and you have in your media player. And it'll show them down here. The other thing they'll do also is with the actors that are it's showing here. If I have any other movies that have them. If I click on it. On their face. It'll show the other movies. So I don't have any other movies that have Ellen DeGeneres in them. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I will show you basically what you need to do in order to rip a DVD so that you can save it on your Plex server. Okay, so what we'll need to do is let's close out a Plex right now. Okay. And there's many, 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 many uh, programs out there that you can purchase that will rip DV DVDs. Make sure that you try their free trials first because a lot of them are not that good. Right now, I am actually using two different ones. I'm using WinX DVD Ripper for Mac and Make MKV. And the reason I'm using Make MKV is it is actually a free program. Oops. So let's go here. I'll show you the page. Okay. It's makemkv.com. Very simple. Come in here. This is the Windows version to download. Okay. And you'll just pick whatever type of operating system you're using. I'm using a Mac, so it downloaded the Mac. So let me show you the program. It's really, really quite simple. 
and close out of that and let's open up the program okay this it's very basic okay what it's doing is it's looking for my dvd burner what do you say we rip a, C, a dvd right now it's quite easy what i'm going to do is i have an old disney dvd here and it is cinderella 3 if you don't notice by the movies that i have on here i have two daughters and they love disney movies so i have a lot of disney dvds so what you basically do in order to rip a, a dvd it's very simple you take the dvd you put it in your dvd player the for your computer as you can see it brought it in Okay, while I'm waiting for it to read this DVD, let me just make it perfectly clear. In areas, this is not legal. It is illegal to copy DVDs and to store them. Uh, the region that I'm in, it is legal because I do own the DVD. Um, I still have the physical copies of the DVD in my possession. So it, it is legal for me to do it, but make sure you check your local area if you're going to do this, because there can be some stiff penalties and stiff fines for doing this. All right, so with Make MKV, what you're going to do first is once the DVD has loaded, you're going to click on this icon here. Well, that's basically going to do. It's going to go through the DVD, uh, see what files are on it, all the bonus material and it'll come back to it usually takes about four or five minutes so i'll be back to you guys in a few seconds all right so it's done catalog but i guess it's basically cataloging the cd the dvd and it shows these files now what i do is i i don't save the bonus material the chapter titles the uh, to, for what I'm using it for, basically I just want to watch the movie. So what I'll do is I'll click these, take these off. Then I'll go in and I'll look and see, like, this DVD has Spanish subtitles and French subtitles. I don't speak Spanish and I don't speak French, so I don't need them. So I'm not going to waste the disk space by downloading them. So those are unchecked, and that's that's the same reason for these. I'm not going to waste the disk space. So what I'm going to do is just download this title here, which is 4.1 gigabytes. What I want to do is tell them, or actually not tell them, tell the program where to save this. So what I'm going to do is I will go into my Plex server here, into my movies, I've cataloged them as into different genres. So this is a Disney movie. And like I said, I have a ton of Disney movies. Okay, we're going to create a new folder. And we're going to call it Cinderella 3. Okay, and if you know what the the date of the movie, where it, when it came out, you would want to put that inside of... Um, Parenthes not parentheses, um, parentheses. No, these things. Hey, okay. I think no parentheses are the. No, that's quotes. Those are parentheses. Okay, who messing myself up here? It's late. <laughs> but you'll create that folder. Okay, it's created on my network area storage device. Click open. So now it's telling where to save. The, the file and the file type that you're going to be saving is a .mkv and .mkv files they're, they're small in size uh, they're read by the Plesk ser Ple I keep on saying Plesk Plex server uh, Plesk is actually something for an internet uh, a website um, the hosting so I, I'm getting my two Technology is confused here, but it's Plex, P-L-E-X. Server reads MKV uh, files. So let's go over here. We're going to start creating the MKV file. Okay, and depending on the movie, OK, 
Okay, this is a full-length movie. So this is probably going to take about 45 minutes to rip. So what I'm going to do is I will stop the video right here. And I'll get back with you once the, the, the file is completed. And I'll show you how to get the, um, the DVD to show up in your Plex media server. So I'll be back with you guys in just a uh, two minutes. Uh, so far, it took a little under 15 minutes. So it's probably going to be 15 minutes to burn this DVD or rip this DVD. Uh, that's pretty quick. Uh, the speed on how quick a uh, DVD gets ripped, it all depends on the DVD itself, how big it is, the files. Uh, I'm not ripping Blu-ray right now. My DVD player from my computer is does not support Blu-ray, so I'm not able to do that. It also depends on the computer that you're ripping with. Uh, the faster the computer, the faster it will rip. It also depends on if you have any other programs running at the same time, that'll slow down to rip the DVD. So keep that in mind if you're going to rip some DVDs. It, it may take a little bit. Like me recording the screen is actually slowing it down a little bit, as you can tell from the time. Uh, so should be done in about 50 seconds and we'll get and I'll show you how to update your library in Plex so that this DVD shows up and you're able to watch it there. All right, so the DVD is now completely ripped. It's saved on my NAS server. Uh, I can click on this to come out and once you're done. Nothing else you need to do in Make MKV anymore, so you can eject the DVD. I don't know whether the mic picked that up, but it spits out the DVD. One thing I have to make sure I do right away is put it back in its case or I will lose the DVD. Alright, so if I go over... Let's go over here. And let's go to my NAS. We'll go to Plex. Shared Movies. Disney. And you will see Cinderella 3 right here. Okay, so it did create an MKV file. If I go over to Plex right now, most likely this will not show up. Uh, just for the fact of you actually have to update your library and you have to allow it so um, IMDB can update the images, the information about it. Even though I'm showing you how to do it, it will actually do it automatically. Uh, but let's speed it up a little bit here. So let's go over to the Plex server. Let's see if I got lucky and it did pick it up right away. Again, since I logged out, I got to log back in, enter my PIN number. We'll go over more here, and we'll go on to my server here, and let's take a look at movies. Okay, and as you can see, it has not picked it up yet. Right, unless it's down on the bottom, no. Okay, just to be sure. No, it does not, it is not showing Cinderella 3. So, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to update my library. Very easy to do. Actually, I think it's doing it right now. You see this here? It's an activity monitor. We click on this. Nope. Actually, I'm recording two shows, TV shows right now. So, let's go in our settings. Go down to libraries. Okay, and these are the libraries that I have on my NAS. Uh, that is in, I believe, uh, ooh, what did I save that in? I think I saved, actually, you know what? We'll go for everything here. So we'll scan the entire library. So let's hit scan library files. And as you can see right now, it's scanning in the DVD movies library. And it usually takes a few minutes to do that. So why don't I do this? I will leave you guys again and i'll come back once it's done are back it looks like it scanned all the movies right now it's scanning my music library uh that should only take a few seconds i don't have much in there right now 
photos I have nothing in there and then I showed you I just got a couple of home videos I put those in there just to test to see how it would work so what do you say let's go back over to our library and let's see if that movie is now showing Okay, so we will go into movies. Okay, and uh, this is it right here. So basically what it is, is as you can see, the circle going around is still updating the information from IMDb. Uh, why it put it as Cinderella, I have no idea. It should actually be Cinderella 3. All right, so see both video both videos are now here. I don't know why it it did that. It should come up as Cinderella three. Let me take a look at the file itself. Okay, one of the problems that I'm having is that it is not listed on IMDb. All right, let's try something here. See, like I said, it has to be has to be exact so I just pulled up the information for the DVD on Wikipedia and the title rather than the number three is actually III and the date of it is 2007 so let's put that in and let's see if it makes any difference it did not hmm one other thing change the file name let's see how that works so let's go back over here actually I think it might already be nope just recording the show go over here let's go back to library and let's scan the library files this may not work because if I name the file it might show up as two different files because the, the watered-down version that's on the NAS server, it, it does have a, it's limited. You can do so much more with things that are on, um, if I downloaded Plex onto, onto a computer. Uh, but like I said, then you got to leave the computer running all the time. So let's take a look and see if that fixed it. Okay, let's go over to my server. We will look at DVD movies. There we go. Now it's showing Cinderella 3. There we go. Oh, okay. Okay, that's what it did was it took... See, in just that little time there, IMDb updated the cover. Because that is actually the cover of the DVD now. Okay, this is the original Cinderella. And this here is the collection. See up here you have collections... If you go up here, it will put your collections in here because you can see there's a couple of two movies under Cinderella. All right, so let's go into our Cinderella folder. Let's click on Cinderella 3, and here we go. Here's all the IMDb information. Okay, you get a Rotten Tomatoes score, how long the movie is, um, you can play the trailer from the movie. Okay, I can go in and I can edit this information. Okay, there's more stuff that I could do. I could do all of this stuff here too. Um, but it also shows the actors that were in the movie, the voice actors, reviews of the movie. Okay, and the Cinderella collection is down here. So by clicking on play, like I said, I'm going to blur this out because I don't want to get a copyright strike against me. Oops, it's down here. Let's bring it up. And there we go. Okay, so that's how you tear it. That's how you rip a DVD. And here's the movie. Let me get out of it here before I get the copyright strike. All right, so that seemed to work very well for me. Uh, like I said, there's good things and there's bad things with Plex. Uh, I think I would be happy with Plex if I had used the watered-down version on the NAS first. But I had downloaded it to my computer and I was 
testing it to see how it worked on whether it was something that I wanted to have. And the version that I had on my computer, I had so much more access to the files on what showed and how it showed. So, uh, I still don't know whether I'm going to keep it after the three-month trial is up. Uh, I wish that there were some tutorials out there that would show me how to gain more access or update the the um, the watered down version on my NAS. In any case, uh, that's how you rip a, a DVD to store in the Plex Media Server. All right, everyone, that's how you rip a DVD to store it so it can be displayed in your Plex Media Server. Uh, I still have a lot to learn on it. Uh, I'm still very choppy at creating these, but I, I'll get the hang of it eventually. Like I said, I'm still not sure whether I'm going to keep Plex because there's some things that, like, like I said, I originally downloaded it on the computer. It was easier on the computer. Running it with this NAS, uh, I look now and I kind of wish that I didn't buy the NAS. Uh, it's not running the way that I wanted it to. In any case, Make sure that if you are going to do this, that it is legal where you are, okay? There are quite a few areas where this is, you're not allowed to do this. Uh, even if you own the DVD, you're not allowed to make copies of it. This is a long-standing battle. Uh, so if you do do this and it is not legal where you live, I am not responsible. It, make sure, double check, triple check. Because you don't want to deal with this either with your internet service provider or with the, the, the FCC themselves. So make sure that it's legal. That being said, thanks for coming in. I do appreciate it. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment below. If you have any questions or you have any comments to let me know if there's an easy way to do this. Uh, I am using a WD MyCloud Home NAS that had Plex was built right into it. So if there's a way to update this, I'm trying to find a way to do it so that I have more control over it. Please let me know. I am not having any luck finding anything on the internet. Um, yeah, so let me know. Let me know if you know of a way to do this. But thanks for coming in. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Subscribers, like I said, I, I appreciate you guys every single day. Thank you for, for watching this video. Hit that bell icon down on the bottom there, and you'll get a notification anytime I put up a new video. I have a few more videos coming out real soon, so check back often. Get those notifications if you're a subscriber. You won't have to check back. You'll know when they come in. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys again real soon.